Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin from CollectingJapanesePrints.com coming live uh, to you uh, from Chicago, Illinois, uh, where every Wednesday at, roughly I usually do it at 1 p.m. on Wednesdays, we do Woodblock Wednesday, where we discuss all aspects of Japanese prints, uh, paintings, or, or culture. Uh, today's video is a little early. I've been having issues with Facebook Live. Uh, in fact, last week's uh, video, uh, though I did one, um, I don't think it went live. And so I decided uh, to just wait a little bit and do another one uh, this week. And uh, for those of you that were waiting for one, I think the wait will be worth it. Uh, today's topic um, is on um, Koshiro Onchi, or Onchi. Uh, he is arguably the most important uh, 20th century Japanese printmaker. He's certainly my favorite artist. And... Um, he was credited uh, to create, he, was, he created the first work of abstraction in 1915 in printed form, uh, really ahead of the curve there. And I mean, he was a visionary uh, virtuoso in terms of printing, and I can go on and on about him. Uh, he's, he's just fantastic in so many different ways. Uh, but today, um, I think we're in luck because we have a three impression um, collection of prints by Unchi Kushiro. And most dealers never see an impression of this design in their career, uh, let alone collectors are able to, to acquire work. Well, for today's video, I have three self-printed impressions of this design. It's extraordinary. And, um, you know, I, I, I just felt the need to share this with all of you. So without further ado, let's just go to the table and have a look. So uh, I'll start with the, the finished print. Um, for those of you who uh, are familiar, and of course, um, this is the violinist uh, Nijiko Suwa. And uh, she was a 20th century violinist who worked before the war and then afterwards. She performed around Japan um, and had quite a large following. And in fact, what, I'll, what I have here to even aid with this conversation is a program from 1948. Um, this is actually a really wonderful um, piece of ephemera with her photograph you could see that her hair is styled with it, with kind of like a large bouffant up in front. And you could kind of see Onchi's rendition of that. And, of course, her signature and dated 1948. And this print is, is a design done in 1946. So she had this same hairstyle in 1946. And the story of this print is interesting. It's post-war... Um, uh, U.S. occupied Japan, and uh, the U.S. sponsored a concert on a military base uh, where uh, Sua was invited to perform. And the Japanese government, or the Japanese, um, um, well, the, the, the Japanese government obviously sanctioned the, the, the concert, but the U.S. forces or the U.S. Uh, military the personnel invited uh, Japanese diplomats and as well as artists and, and other people. And Unchi was one of the attendees at that um, concert. And he was so moved by the concert. He said it was full of melancholy. Uh, he was saddened and at the same time moved by the, the dramatic um, violin um, and also just being in on a military base occupied, um, well, you know, the Americans occupying Japan, the whole, the, whole ex, the whole experience left him with this profound sadness that he sort of wanted to capture in a print. And in this impression, it's from, as I said, 1946, it's an early impression, uh, but not the first states. Um, just a quick note on the states. The first states, one of these uh, black um, sort of stylized lines that either echo the shape of the violin in reverse, or it could also be read as sh the head and shoulders of people sort of 
standing there listening, or it could also be interpreted as sort of just the music itself wafting through the 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 concert hall. But anyway, uh, one of them is actually done in a light gray with uh, yellow in the face. That's the first state. The second state, there's two of these black uh, lines, as you see, but there's yellow in the face. The third state, which is this one, uh, has some gray in the face all around, very carefully done. The, the fourth fourth state has gray. You sometimes see variations where the background is printed with a white um, background, which you'll see. I have that one. And then the later state, the face isn't done with such care, and it's just pale white, and the background is the color of the paper. So there's various um, states because Onchi was one of these restless artists that hated to produce work the same exact manner. So when you have an Onchi print, uh, and then you actually, if you're lucky, and you have two impressions to compare side by side, you could see the nuances and in, in, in how different um, one impression is to the other. So basically, uh, this, you know, this is a really wonderful opportunity to see. So on this impression, um, you'll see, again, Onchi's really wonderful sort of spontaneous um, expressive printing style. The background is done in this sort of soft grays. With, and in it, this was done with one go. And so the, the printing was done sort of almost massaging the paper to the block. And you could see areas, there's tonalities of darker gray and then lighter gray that sort of blend into this background. And of course, as I mentioned, the face is done with a lot of care. And I'll, I'll zoom in so you can kind of see how subtle that gray is around the eyes and on the face. And then no Onchi print is done with with sort of you know I almost kind of I almost kind of call it antiseptic. Uh, when you see other prints that are not printed by Onchi, the lines are perfect. There's no splatter, and of course Onchi being the mo really the most expressive um, printmaker of the 20th century, you could see kind of splatter here. There isn't, um, sort of a consistency, but more of an emotional sort of quality in the printing. So I'm, I'm just going to zoom in so you could kind of see. And again, I'll bring in this really interesting um, piece of ephemera, this program from 1948, so you could kind of see uh, what she looked like in person. Now, the next work I'll discuss is really interesting. This is a self-printed uh work by Onchi, very rare in the sense, well, I mean, all Onchi prints are rare, but this particular work, um, it's a trial print, but I think it might also be just unfinished. The paper quality is not um, early enough. It's not from uh, the, the early, uh, it's not like 1946 when he designed it. I think it's closer to about 1950. So uh, he may have been working on this and got sick and never, never completed it. Um, but he was very close to completing it. You could see in this impression, all of the gray is there, the, the block of the violin and the, the lips. So the only block that's actually missing in this impression is the black block that is on the, the, it's basically the final uh, block that is printed onto the design. You could see that the, the, the block block is printed over kind of a, um, the, the brown of the bow. It's kind of interesting how he incorporated this, this part of the design as the same block. And so as you could see, it's actually not a very complicated print. So you're, we're talking about the gray, the brown, brownish red, and then the black. And on in other impressions, you see variations, um, but, but here the, the, the white 
around the figure is the natural color of the paper as is this. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll show you another impression where that's a little bit different. But for now, I'm just going to zoom in so you could see. And in, on this print, you could see how wonderfully sort of uh, how it's printed. It's soft. It's a subtle printing. It's not harsh and rigid, uh, which uh, tends to be more accurate in its registration. Here you have this. This is so indicative of Onchi, this wet uh, printing technique. Um, you see the splatter here which of course would be covered by the black block. You wouldn't have even noticed that there was splatter, but you know, you know, it's just so printed with such care and softness. And when I say care, I mean more about the emotional expressive quality that Unchi was able to uh, sort of negotiate with the block and the paper to, to sort of convey this, this soft printing, which is actually very hard to do Again, going back to the finished uh, prints, you could see the black being there and, and how it all comes down. Um, again, the program from 1948 showing you the, the way that she actually looked. And then the last impression, which is an amazing thing to have three Onchi self-printed works in, in one um, location is just amazing. I mean, most museums in the world could not do this. It's um, an extraordinary thing to have here, and I'm very happy to share it with you. And on this impression, it's interesting because the different, there are nuances, uh, and that's very onchi esque that no impression is printed uh, the same way from another one. But on this one, the most noteworthy thing is, as far as I can tell, I've never seen this on, on a self-printed um, work, but this background has a white um, block. So you could kind of see this white line going across. And this area here, this is a white pigment on the paper. Whereas on this impression, it's the natural color of the paper that is, that is there. Here, it's not. It's an additional block that he added. He also printed the face and the body with a white block. You could see the white sort of bleeding into the gray there, which is really interesting. He, he probably thought, well, to, to, to create more of a stark contrast, I sh he thought probably to add the white to create a bit more of a, as I said, a, a, a stark contrast. And... Um, uh, you know, you see again in the background this soft, subtle sort of uh, gray that sort of looks, it almost, it, it looks wet um, at first blush. And it also looks like it's almost been printed almost with a piece of cloth because it has this sort of almost texture to it. And here it almost looks like if he did indeed use a cloth that I um, mean, there was some wrinkling in the cloth and how it's printed, which creates this wonderful nuance to this impression. The other thing I want to say about this print is the, the printing around the eyes is fantastic. You know, it, it creates this sort of shadow from, from her eyelids, and, and it looks like there was this bright light coming in across the design. Um, and so th that's really quite great. So what I'll do is, I'll, again, I'll zoom in, and then I'll, I'll zoom across so you can see all three. It's, again, it's amazing to be able to, to show three self-printed Onchi impressions of this, this really famous design. Another thing I'll point out is with Onchi, he oscillated from using a stamped signature in his prints, Onzi, you could see here, and that's the sort of the old way of writing um, Romanji, uh, from Onzi to his pencil signature here. It's very rare to see his pencil signature with the actual date. 
And on here, it being an unfinished um, trial print, th there's no signature. But on own sheet prints, you, you see both things. Sometimes you see them the, the, the signature with a stamp. Uh, sometimes you just see the signature and sometimes you just see the stamp. You just have to be careful because there are, uh, rep not reproductions, but there are later printings by Harai. And I also suspect there's other printings by Sakino. Uh, but at the very least, there's uh, an edition, I believe, of 50 by Harai. And the Harai impressions have the white face. They lack the, the white block in the background there, but they have this stamp. The stamp is usually, I think, on the other side, uh, but they're very consistent in that. And so just because you see an Onzi seal on, on a print does not make it a self-printed work by Onji. And so being able to sort of examine Onji printed impressions like these three, you get to see these nuances, this subtle printing, which, you know, that is, it's, it's kind of messy, but spontaneous and expressive. You see how the ink just sort of pulled out and the splatter there. And, and there's this, this sort of inconsistency in the gray that creates a sense of movement. I mean, it's, it's really fantastic um, in the way that he printed. This is what you wanna see on an Onchi impression, as in this case. Here, and you see different nuances. Here, uh, you, you, you're, not miss, you're missing sort of a wash of gray that suggests movement of the bow um, through the air, where here, he almost, pr he, you could tell is deliberate. There's this printing effect where the, the Baron, or maybe even his fingertips, he used it against the paper block to sh kind of suggest this sense of movement and the, the bow sort of disappears into the, the gray. Um, it, it, it really does sort of suggest movement here, there, it, it's a little bit more contemplative and you, it's missing that sort of sense of movement. And the focus is more on the face and the, and the eyes and in a, in a moment that is sort of encapsulated in a, in a stillness here. It, this is about light. And you, you kind of really see uh, the print sort of coming. The power of it is, is the light and then the movement in the moment of this, if I can almost call, call, call it, contemplative and quiet. It's sort of the moment before the, the violin bow moves across. Whereas here, there is a sense of movement and you, you don't have this calmness. You, you, it's a little bit more dynamic. It's also, uh, it's powerful in a different way. You know, and I can't say uh, one is better than the other. They're both wonderful in their own way. And that's what makes Onchi prints so fantastic. Because they're works of art that, of course, rely on, on the design. The design is uh, paramount, but it's how Onchi uses the design to even interpret different impressions of the same design in a different way. I mean, it's, I, I think, uh, I, I, if I think about 20th century printmakers of Japan, not many achieved this, uh, this ability. So uh, it, it's just fantastic. And, and again, this last one is a rare trial print that shows you his work here in the, in the gray and that soft, wet printing that's so indicative of, of Onchi. And, and so you can kind of see the artist at work here. And it's a wonderful opportunity to show you three prints. So I'm going to pan across the table one last time so you could see them.
Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. Today was a, a treat to be able to see those uh, three self-printed Onshu works side by side. It's a delight to be able to share them with you. Uh, let me know what you think, uh, if you have any favorites. Uh, let me know if you've seen self-printed Onshu works before, uh, because you know it's, it's a rare treat to be able to see them. They're in museums around the world, but they're rarely displayed unless there's a, an exhibition of some kind. So, uh, you know, if you're in Chicago, I recommend uh, going to the Art Institute and making an appointment and seeing some munchies there. Or, of course, uh, you shoot me an email. I'm also in the city and, and have a collection of onchis that I'd be willing to, to share with, uh, with any interested parties. But, but anyway, thank you again for joining me. Uh, and please, if you haven't uh, had a chance to visit my website, it's collectingjapaneseprints.com. And today we spoke about Onchi, and I happen to have some really rare uh, self-printed Onchi works on the website as well. So thanks again for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next week on Woodblock Wednesday. Thanks.